hello friends now time to start the new chapter and the chapter is valuation one of the most important chapter as far as the syllabus of customs is concerned because the one practical question is bound to be there in your exam and this chapter is equally important for theoretical question also so in this chapter what you are going to learn what is value how to determine the assessable value how to compute the duties the total amount of duty payable and related terms right lots of information is given in the study material but i must tell you that a major part of that is only for the sake of knowledge not relevant for the purpose of exam right i'll pin point page by page but right now i'm going to explain you the concept of value right first of all value and price these are not the synonymous concepts value is there even when there is no price right so if we assume that price is the value then you will really face a problem that whether duty is payable when you bring something something gifted to you or any importer gets the material without any price by way of donation answer is no whether there is a price or no price irrespective of that when the goods are brought to india from a place outside india duty becomes payable on the basis of value so value is something intrinsic right so even if there is no transaction between the sender and the receiver here or exporter overseas and importer in india no transaction of money is involved is still custom duty is payable unless provided otherwise okay so that's why i said the value and price these are not the synonymous terms right so value now we can say that when we use the word value this is actually assessable value right uh, what is assessable value this is value on which amount of duty is computed and this can certainly be different from actual transaction why let me give you an example suppose some article having a value of us dollars 1000 this is imported today and payment for this has to be remitted either tomorrow or it has already been remitted yesterday right just for example in the past it has already been remitted when the rate of us dollar was 63 rupees or it may have to be remitted later and assuming that the today's dollar rate is 65 these are just assumption don't compare with the actual rate prevailing in the market right and quite possible the rate of dollar prescribed by cbec here we have cbec rate and cbec has given that us dollar will be equal to rupees 60 now you are confused we have remitted earlier at the price of 63 rupees for a dollar 
or if not remitted before now it has to be remitted and the value as of today already 65 and tomorrow when we actually remit it may be 65.5 or it may be 67 or some other price and CBC has already given at 60. So friends let me tell you that actual remittance whether it is at 63 or 65 doesn't make a difference for the purpose of duty because for the purpose of duty we will compute only on this rate the rate given by CBEC right so this accessible value has nothing to do with the actual transaction right because in this itself I have said quite possible we have remitted earlier at 63 or we may have to remit later at 65 but CBC says for the purpose of duty compute one dollar equal to 60 rupees right that's why this valuation has nothing to do with the actual remittance this valuation is only for the purpose of computation of duty okay now section 14 says valuation can be two ways according to section 14 valuation can be in two ways this can be either transaction value or this can be tariff value what is tariff value what is transaction value tariff value this is accessible value fixed by central government so where the accessible value itself has been decided by the government in that case actual transaction will be ignored so there may be a transaction value there may not be a transaction value or whatever be the transaction value if there is a tariff value fixed by the government then we have to, nothing to do with the transaction value or in the simple words you can say that this value if fixed by the government it will have overriding effect over the actual transaction value and then if this is the case whatever we are going to study in the chapter that becomes literally irrelevant literally irrelevant right why because we are going to decide how to compute the accessible value and the accessible value already fixed by the government right so this is one case where nothing much has to be done another case where the duty is a standard duty duty is payable at a fixed amount for each accessible unit in that case also the whole chapter will become irrelevant okay now coming to this part you can continue here I need to clear some portion this is value shall be the price value shall be the price paid or payable for the goods and this is at the place of import or export where number A parties are not related and number B price is the 
soul consideration okay now this says the value shall be the price what is actually the price this is the cost of production plus margin of these supplier in, in the course of international trade generally taxes are not there so price is the cost of production plus other expenses whatever incurred by the seller plus his profit margin that is called the price so either paid or payable but this should be for the goods there may be services associated with the goods then the value of the services will be independent and there is a separate taxation for that not the custom duty now this price is at the place of import or export this is at the place of import or export so what is place of import the place where the goods reach for the first time in india first arrival or first landing in india that is place of import and opposite where from goods are sent outside india that is place of export so you can say custom barrier custom barrier that is the place of import or export but there can be a little confusion that by chance the goods happen to be received in mumbai and those are shifted those are transshipped from mumbai to ahmedabad and the custom clearance is done in ahmedabad then the custom barrier is in ahmedabad right so be very clear the place of import the place where the goods arrive first in india that is the place of import whatever is done within india that is not to be added with the assessable value right and then parties are not related what is the meaning of the term related who are the parties related friends this is defined in the rules we have import valuation rules export valuation rules so there the term related has been defined and then this is price is the sole consideration so quite possible other than price also there are many more things right so this is just an introduction what shall be the value so value shall be the price paid or payable for the goods at the place of import and export where parties are not related and the price is the sole consideration okay underlined everything okay now moving further now again assessable value for import and export what shall be the case for export assessable value is price at the place of export price at the place of export so i already told you price means the cost of production plus other expenses related to that plus the profit margin of the supplier of the goods and in this case the exporter right so he incurs a cost for bringing the goods up to the place of export that is also included in the price so we are not talking about the price ex factory price we are talking about the price at the place of export so all the expenses up to up to bringing the goods at the place of export are already included in this and that is acceptable as assessable value so in this case we just have to see that all the expenses for bringing the goods up to the place of export have been added otherwise those additions are required to be done right but in case of import the price given by the supplier is generally the fob price fob price means all the expenses of the supplier of the goods in the country of origin have been included by him up to the point of export in that country but lots of other expenses are involved for bringing the goods from the place of export in that country up to the place of import in our country so all those things have to be added why 
refer the provisions we had written earlier. We are concerned with the price at the place of import, not what we are going to pay to the seller. Right. So that price plus the expenses incurred for bringing the goods up to place of import in India, all those have to be added. Right. So this is also prescribed in section 14 itself. So this is we can say transaction value. plus prescribed additions okay now these prescribed additions these are mainly related to transport insurance handling brokerage packing then royalty goods supplied and friend these are only examples so that's why I'm adding the word etc because how many additions have to be done there is an exhaustive list of all the additions prescribed and that is under rule number 10 and rule number 10 in any case we are going to do in detail so you can say that prescribed additions these were these things rather than remembering the things here you can say that prescribed additions are as per rule number 10 and that in any case we are going to do in detail okay so for valuation we have import valuation rules as well as we also have export valuation rules but the major stress has always been on import valuation right so what is there in the rules just let me explain you so here i will put the title import valuation rule import valuation rules 2007 export valuation rules are also 2007 right so what I am doing is first I am explaining you everything as per the your requirement for exam and then we will refer the material right because as I said in the beginning lots of additional information is there in the material which is not relevant for exam so do everything whatever i'm doing on the board and this will be relevant for your preparation for exam and the material that will refer for two point of views number one whatever they have given that we have to refer and number two there are practical problems we will cover up every practical problem on the board but later okay so in the import valuation rules rule number two this is having all the definitions which are relevant this talks about identical goods similar goods goods of same kind related those are all important terms have been defined in rule number two rule number three this is acceptance of transaction value what are the conditions subject to which the actual transaction value itself will be accepted as the correct accessible value rule number four this is value based on identical goods number five value based on similar goods number six
चेंज ऑफ ऑर्डर ऑफ रूल्स दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज इन रूल नंबर थ्री इट सेल्फ हेज बीन सेट दैट इफ द ट्रांजेक्शन वैल्यू इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल फॉर सम रीजन दैन ऑल द रूल शुड बी अप्लाइड इन अ सिक्वेंस राइट सो इफ द वैल्यू इज नॉट देन इन रूल नंबर थ्री देन गो टू फोर एंड इफ इट इज नॉट इन फोर देन ओनली यू कैन गो टू फाइव सो दैट्स वाई द रूल नंबर थ्री सेज दैट फॉलो द रूल्स इन अ सिक्वेंस रूल नंबर सिक्स इज एन एक्सेप्शन दैट सेज दैट दिस इज द केस यू कैन चेंज द सिक्वेंस Rule number seven. This talks about deduction method. Number eight. This talks about computed value. Number nine. This is. best assessment number 10 additions and adjustments number 11 declaration of value declaration of value by importer and number 12 rejection of declared value by officer so these are 12 rules which are relevant right so in this video you simply focus on whatever we have already done on the board till now section 14 and here we have the list of rules in the next video i'll start with explaining the entire rules starting from rule number 2 and these rules are not to be read in a sequence that is also important right because first we'll talk about rule number 2 starting with 3 but 3 we will directly jump to rule number 11 and 12 then again go back to rule number 3 and then the sequence right so you cannot read this in the sequence unless you have your complete knowledge about what are the contents of these rules so that all that in the next video thank you